confused world is a world full of sunshine, a world full of make-believe. Strange, isn't it, that we never got an official Rod Hull and Emu computer game? I mean, you could get Rod Hull and Emu everything else, lunch boxes, books, and uh, even Rod Hull and Emu Easter eggs. Yes, I bought one once uh, on discount from Woolworths. It was disgusting, horribly cheap chocolate. Anyway, that's not why we're here today. We're here today to play a brand new game for the VIC-20, and you will need a 35k expansion for it, Emu's Massive Hunt from the Futures 8-bit. There is no sign of Rod Hull on the packaging, but there is an emu and a pink windmill. Physical copies of the game, which I have here, are available from the Futures 8-bit, but there are digital downloads as well. And we fire up the game, coded by Hugo, who's done so many great games, such as Cheese and Onion. So strange to see a 2024 date on a VIC-20 game. Some options to start with. Uh, basically, difficulty gives you more... Uh, lives and less things to collect. And now it's the beginning of a fantastic story. Let's make a journey to the pink windmill. Good luck. And there you are, Emu at the grand entrance. And you have to collect objects and jellies in order to open the jelly door to defeat Grotbags, for she has captured Rod Hull. You also need to get keys to open doors. This screen's not a mega tree. Reference to Jet Set Willy, because of course this is a platform game. Uh, the instructions say uh, help the emu to traverse the pink windmill, but watch out, it's been overtaken by all sorts of monsters. Collect items to help emu, including a snorkel to breathe underwater, a pickaxe to break through blocks, and boots to double jump. Can you find all the 15 green jellies to Unlock the jelly door and rescue Rod. And there's three keys to collect. And there's two jumping options. Uh, one which has a uh, fire to jump and using diagonals to dash. So you meet, see me dashing there, trying to push that block there. And if you dash whilst jumping, you can jump further. And the instructions also has a handy hint sheet of how to get to the first object you need to collect. The game has 255 items to collect and 64 locations. And it says the first thing you've got to do is upgrade Emu's abilities, which means finding a key to get an object. Emu has inertia, which feels slightly strange in a VIC-20 platformer. But it's a very standard type of game, so you can easily get into it. It's not a lot to work out, apart from the dash thing, which you can see me doing there. Dashing enables you to run faster for a little bit and also bounce off enemies. And if you dash when you're in the air, you get to jump further. There's a joystick to collect. So I'm going to game pad. Floppy disk there. Yeah, you can only go up ladders, not down, unless I'm playing this game very, very wrongly. The difficulty level at the start defines how many lives you get as well. And I've died. Quite nicely, you get a, a short time of invulnerability when you first respawn. Unlike games like Jet Set Willy, where you just die over and over again if you die in the wrong place. You will respawn. There's certain kind of respawn points on the screens. So again, you won't get the... You won't get that Jet Set Willy thing. There's a bit of VIC-20 colour clash going on. And I think that's one of those areas I need to get the pickaxe for. Ford is it on. Is this one of the first tricky screens? Collision detection for some of the baddies isn't exactly spot on at times. You seem to have been brushed past them. Let's jump up there. You can turn the tune off 
but I refuse to. That's a luxury. See, that touched me, okay? I do have an invulnerability cheat for this game. No, I won't tell you how to do it because I've got a special version with it included. But yeah, you can see there I died, whereas I brushed past those other enemies. It's just a little bit ropey on that collision detection at times. Not a problem. It, it, if anything, it's generous. It's not harsh. It's not like some games where you're half a mile away from the baddies and uh, suddenly you just die. So up to the second floor. Some of these things look like objects and they're actually not. Forwarded it on again. I think this screen is where you're going to end up jumping down into the water when you've got the snorkel, but at the moment it's absolutely lethal, so you need to jump over it. Forward it on again. Up to there, right, this is this is a proper jet set willy screen, isn't it? And I'm gonna have to dash to jump in some of these. Yeah, there we go. Have to do that. To dash, you have to hold down a fire with a diagonal. Oh, no, that was wrong. Forward it on again, because you don't want to see me lots of jumping. There are things that can kill you. Little fire things, or well, they might be spikes. And they do blend into the background sometimes. That looks like uh, something that needs to be moved. That means you need... Oh, no. Okay. This doesn't have that kind of thing that Cheese and Onion had, where that felt like more like a 16-bit platformer on the Vic, in terms of its style. Oh, yeah, I bounced off that baddie there by luck, because I must have been dashing at the same time. Yeah, I mean, this feels like a very traditional 8-bit platformer. A huge for the Vic by the Vic standards. Oh, yeah, you can't go in water until you've got the snorkel either, so water is insta-death. Blue door over there, so I need a blue key for that. Right, so... Right, watch that. They're spikes, apparently, but they look like fire. There we go. Move that rock by dashing against it. I've now got a key. The instructions say the first door is nearby. That has the snorkel. We're going to find it. Right, okay, here it is. I think that's the snorkel. In the mouldy cupboard. Oh. Oh, no. Right. There's going to be some massive loop to get round to do this again, isn't it? There. If you linger on screens for too long, Grotbags comes and gets you. Or she flies around. And depending on the difficulty level you're playing at, the more she will appear. All the baddies are one colour. It's white. Again, I guess... Oh, I've died on the fire slash spikes. I don't know what they are. It's good fun. And that invulnerability really helps. <laughs> right, let's try again. Okay, let's get this snorkel. No! I've got a dash. You need to dash. Try again. Try again. No. Alright, there on the go. Try again. Uh, incidentally, the game does have a Easter egg, which some reviewers have revealed, which I'm not going to tell you how to get it, because it's an Easter egg, right? But it's a whole extra free game built into this, and it's not once it's loaded up. That's all I'm going to say. It's not a game that's there once all this is loaded up. No, you need to do something to your Vic and load the game. I think I've said too much. But uh, you'll find out, you'll find out, or just go watch one of those other videos. But a decent little extra Easter egg built in. I can't do this. I cannot do this. 
I don't think I'm going to be able to see the extra levels we go underwater and all the rest of it, because I can't get this snorkel. Emu's Massive Hunt is an absolutely massive game, and I haven't even mentioned the price for a physical copy. £4.99. £4.99! A fiver! That's nuts, considering, you know, £1.99 in 1985 is now about £7, £8, and they were doing it on massive scales. The likes of Mastertronic selling 100,000 copies. There's not massive amounts of profit in this. So, uh, yeah, massive value and a massive game. It's enormous fun. It is traditional 8-bit platformer. No, it doesn't break the mould like Cheese and Onion did, giving you a 16-bit game on your 8-bit computer from 1981. Yes, I find the inertia a little bit annoying on this kind of game. I just think that's something that started with Sonic and it's more at home there. Collision detection can be a bit iffy, but it's generous, so I'm not too bothered about that. Yes, you do need a 35k RAM expansion, which these days means a penultimate cartridge from the future is 8-bit granted. But 64 locations, 255 items to find. This is a massive game for one of the least powerful 8-bit micros. And for a fiver, you really can't complain, can you?